already introduced you. This is Chris, Mr. Phillip. All right. Hey, Mr. Okay. Phillip, how are you today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. So, yeah, um, I was just looking over the information and everything in regards to your house, and we were uh, definitely interested in buying it. But I know you said something about there's an auction coming up in about nine days. Is that right? Yes. Did that come from the bank itself or from the trustee? From the bank. Okay. So they got an auction date already set. So, you know, it's, it's a time crunch, to be honest. As you know, nine days isn't really that long. And uh, so uh, are you ready to do something as far as uh, getting some paperwork started if we can agree on everything? Uh, well, I mean, uh, send an offer and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Uh, you already got a couple of offers so far already, right? Correct. What, did they offer you less than what was owed on it or something? Or No. Huh, okay. So they offered you more. Okay. So, so is that is that the plan for your house? Is it more so you're trying to get as much as you can, or is it more so just trying to get the deal done? Well, I mean, we weren't trying to do anything. We're being contacted by a bunch of people. So, you know, we weren't actively trying to sell it. Oh, okay. Because we do have a way where we can actually buy your house and, you know, make sure that it doesn't go to foreclosure because you don't want that on your credit report for 10 years. And uh, that's definitely not a good thing, you know. All right. Hey, give me a second, please. Sure. Take your time. Yeah, my wife wanted me to let you know that we're trying to get the uh, auction date extended on that so we can do something. Oh, okay. Was that have that uh, been tried with the bank before? No, uh, I something I just started doing today. Oh, okay. Because like I say, sometimes when you get you know, usually within seven days of an auction, they start acting real funny. We buy a lot of houses that are going into foreclosure, and sometimes they take almost that time to send the payoff to the title company or to the attorney so that we can close the deal. You know, they sometimes they move really slow. It's like they're trying to take the house on purpose or something, sometime, you know. So I don't know if the case is that with this bank or not, but I have seen that happen in the past. Okay. So is it more so, um, how do you see everything playing out? What would be the best case scenario for you guys? I'm not trying to answer that question. I guess for the house to sell and we don't pay a penny. <laughs> Perfect. So that's exactly what that sounds good. It's the house to sell and don't pay a penny. So, um, so yeah. So, uh, so that's the thing. So we are willing to buy the house for what you owe on it. Um, we would pay the closing costs. You wouldn't have any fees or anything like that. The only thing is the loan will stay in your name temporarily for a period of time until we get the house uh, stabilized. Is that something you would be open to? Oh, we're not open to keeping it in our name. Yeah, we're not open to keeping it in our name. So it would just be the loan itself, so not the house. We would actually buy the house, close through a real estate attorney. Uh, we, like I said, we would pay the closing costs. It wouldn't cost you a dime, and uh, you know that's the only thing. Is there a reason why uh, why you say that? Yeah, because my wife said so. I know that's right. <laughs> Are you planning on buying another house or something, or no? Okay, because there is a way as well that we can do it to where it wouldn't affect your debt-to-income ratio where you could purchase another house possibly in the future, you know, even though that, that loan would be in there. So you're saying that you were, you're not willing to keep the loan in your name? That's, you would, is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay. Um, so an all-cash offer is the only offer that's even possible then? Yes. Okay. And then, um, so do you have an idea what you wanted to get for the property? Give me a second. Well, I want, my wife said I could be honest with you. Um, we we have an offer right now at uh, 155, which will pay it off. Okay, so is that an offer you're thinking about accepting, or? Yes. Okay, so um, if you were to get more than that, would you would you consider selling it to us? Yeah, if it, if it pans out, yeah. 
Okay. So let me check and see what we can do as far as the actual cash offer here. And let's, uh, Ms. Morell, do you know? Do you have an idea or is that something we need to check out first? Yeah, that may be something we could check on first. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's going to be something we can check on first. And then, um, of course, I'll be able to get back with them right away um, tomorrow, first thing. Okay. So that's fine. I just want to make sure because, you know, there's a lot of different options and you need somebody who can actually move quickly and get this deal done in a timely manner so that this doesn't go to auction or anything like that. Because that's our main thing is to make this a win-win situation. We don't want you guys to take a loss unnecessarily when you can uh, actually we can work out a deal. Right. I appreciate that. Okay. Did you have any other questions or anything for me or anything before we let you go? How quickly would that be able to close? How quickly would you be able to close? like lightning so that's the thing so that's why i say we need to have a purchase and sales agreement in they do their title search when we turn it in that usually can take about five days but you know sometimes it can be done quicker that's why i said um you know with the auction being about nine days away uh, we have to come to a resolution of either we're going to buy it or not buy it or you know do another option because uh, we don't want this to go to auction unnecessarily because once the bank forecloses on it it's a whole other set of rules then and then it is that much harder because I see a lot of people come back like, oh, wow, they took our house. We want to go back. And I'm like, yeah, you're fighting up an uphill battle. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it is so much harder after they take the house and go to foreclosure. you got to go through a whole legal procedure and try to sue them and say that they did something wrong. Or, you know, it's a whole other planet that I don't really like to go to. I'd rather do it before it goes to auction. We have a lot more options beforehand. Does that make sense? Yeah. And we could possibly, you know, get, you know, and I know that the wife said the loan couldn't stay in your name. In the event you were able to do something like that with keeping the loan in your name temporarily, we could probably get you more cash at closing than you would get from an outright cash purchase, just being honest with you. Yeah, we're not willing to do that. Yeah, we're That's not fine. willing to do that. Though. That's fine. That's not a problem. I just want to make sure you do know that you do have options. Um, other than that, did you have any other questions or anything for now? Uh, no, thank you. All right. What about you, Ms. Morell? Any questions before we hang up with them? Uh, no more questions. That sums it up. Uh, we pretty much had a thorough, thorough conversation earlier. So, Mr. Phillip, I will um, reach back out to you tomorrow morning. And hopefully we can, you know, uh, get things rolling as soon as possible. All right. Sounds great. Okay. All righty. All right. Are... You do the same. You and your wife have a blessed night, okay? All right. Thank you. You too. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? This is the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Well, Chris Monroe, and I'm right back at you with another real estate video. The way he talks is like the seller of mine. I'm wanting to help this guy, but I don't know if I'll get it. Get his video a like, give it a thumbs up, give it a share. Yeah, you see how they slipping and switch it up on you? You know what? I was just about to text you. You're right, because once that wife got involved, he didn't change the whole story. Because earlier when I asked him doing a script, if they were okay with us taking over the mortgage payments, would they consider it? He said, yes, absolutely. Email her the details. That's when he gave me the email. That's why we have to close all decision makers. We don't need to email nothing. When I email you something, it's this dang on contract. But if the wife is saying no, 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 you see that because the wife says so. You see who the boss is there. And if they're not willing to keep that loan in their name, that's not a, that's not a creative financing deal. The only thing would be a cash offer. And I don't know if 155 is low enough or not. You know, I don't know if that's a wholesaler they're dealing with or if they're dealing with an actual cash buyer. You know, it's totally, you know, this is their decision to make. All we can do is present them with op options from this point. Right, okay, yeah, and I should have, I was in the middle of looking at, you know, comps and everything, but I didn't really crunch the numbers, so I'm going to do that now, um, like I said, I see the houses in the area, this one sold for 194 it's renovated. So this guy done went from, yeah, we'll take a monthly payment. We'll, you can take over our payments. Of course, as soon as that wife get involved, the whole story change. <laughs> but you know what? I ain't tripping because I think I still got the other one to bag for a little cheaper if I had to come out of pocket, you know? Yeah. 
one where they owe about, you know, four or five months, which will be about four or five million for me to get them current. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then, which this one would have been 12000 and I would have want the other one, too. That would have been another five. Not to say it's a problem. I'm just saying I want to kind of slow roll with one at a time so I can kind of process everything, you know? What do you think a cash buyer would buy that house for? Yeah, that's what I'm looking at now. Uh, Give me one second. Because yeah, I'm going to tell you. Huh? I should have asked him what he got for that second offer. He said one fifty five. He said the wife said I can be honest with you. <laughs> that's probably the highest. I, I think that's the highest. I, w- I wonder what the other ones off- I wonder what the other people offered him. Right, right. Me too. So this one right here, this is a four two and a half. Same situation, two story. This was uh, renovated. It sold March nineteen twenty twenty for one ninety four. It actually looked just like their house, carport, everything. Okay. So how did these people make an offer? Did they go see the property or what? That's the other thing I was kind of wondering, too. You know what? They probably did. They just made an offer on the fly. But my thing is this. From what he's saying, you know, in that area, 3 and 119, I promise you, I'm not worried about squatters or anything like that. Just not in that neighborhood here in Memphis. Mm Mm-mm. You know, the 38119 is one of the, if not, you know, one of the wealthiest zip codes in, in Memphis. It's a huge zip code, but it's one of the wealthiest, you know, zip codes here in Memphis. I'm not saying that, you know, no squatters or whatever want squatter in those type of houses, but the tenants left about two years ago. They've been out of the house about four years. Everything was great and good to go when the tenants were there. You see what I'm saying? So now, if the tenants now, now I up, do have a dumb question. It may not be dumb. It may be smart. Do y'all get snow there? Yeah. Because did them, could them pipes had a burst over these last two years while the house was vacant? We haven't had snow since 2000 and 17. And I'm just wondering, I mean, do you get freezing temperatures? It may not even have to be snow. Just freezing temperatures where those pipes can freeze. You know, when a house sits vacant like that for a long time and nobody <laughs> living in it, you know, that, that's, a, that's a thing, too. You know, that's a repair. <laughs> you know, messing yeah, with the pipes. Because yeah. we've I've seen, I bought houses from people that have repaired them or things like that. All the pipes burst, we're going to sell it like it is. All right, fuck, cool. We take it on a discount. You know, so, you know, it's just things I think about when I hear certain things about vacant house over a period of time. Did they care for this house while I was vacant or does it just been sitting two years and nobody has ever even looked at this house in two years? They ain't gotcha. cutting no grass. They ain't doing nothing. They ain't caring for it at all. And I ain't worried about the grass. It's more so about, you know, the internal of the house, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I guess grass could be a problem because sometimes they have trees and stuff growing in the house or sometimes you'd be like what the hell <laughs> or weeds and trees growing into the you know stuff you know I've seen all kind of weird stuff going on yep now this one right here for three is sold for 235 this was back this was March 20th as well Hold on. Yeah, that's kind of tight. I mean, you know, at two thirty-five, seven, a thirty percent discount is only one sixty-five, and they tell me they offer one fifty-five. I mean, that's saying that the house don't need no work unless they're not selling it at a thirty percent discount. If they're doing a twenty percent discount, let's see, two thirty-five times point eight, that's one eighty-eight minus repairs. So, you know, I don't know. It's kind of tight. I can't need a lot of repairs at that number. Yeah. Yeah. Especially where you're trying to make a fee in between on a wholesale deal. So, you know, it just depends. Because this probably would have been good if they would have been okay with terms, huh? It's a slam dunk if they'll take terms. But if the wife said, we can't do that, and she just so adamantly against it, I even tried to save her a little bit, and she still wasn't having it. Nope, we can't do that. Why is that? Yeah. I guess I know why, though. Because those tenants that were in there that were bad left a sour taste in their mouth. Mm-hmm. Bad tenants mess it up for everybody. So, yeah, I would say just figure out what you can offer them cash and go from there. That's all you can really do at this point. Yeah, that is. It's, it's pretty tight. So, i tell you what I'm going to do. One of my best buyers, I'm going to just shoot him the zip code in the street and tell him, hey, what would you purchase this house for? Considering, we're just going to consider all that. Consider rehab. I'm going to say it's, what, ten fifteen thousand? Yeah, at minimum. Yeah, at minimum. Because, see, typically what I would do sometimes with, with um, a lot of my buyers I do have relationships with, I'll send it to Greg, and Greg will get back with me and say, hey, Z, we can be around 170 right here. You see what I'm saying? If you say so, that, then you can lock that bad boy up. 
Yeah, if they really like that zip code, you might not have to sell it on a 30% discount. It might be a 20% discount, so. Yeah, yeah, okay. If it's really that hot over there, and they really begging for deals, give them what they want. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, crunch my numbers and send this to him and uh, see what we can do. So in nine days, I need to be getting this locked up and moved tomorrow with the buyer and everything. Yeah, you need it locked up with the seller, buyer, everything as soon as tomorrow so that they can get an escrow to get closed within that time frame. Yeah, and I'm going to tell my attorney to get a move on it, too. You know, just even though he's fast, like, we really need to be a little bit more faster with this. We need to be okay. speedy Gonzalez. All right. All right, then, Chris. Well, yeah, tomorrow, um, like I said, I'll reach out to you if I can get Scott and his wife back on the phone with the other house. So they're okay with taking payments. We just got to talk a little bit more with them. No problem. Yeah, we can do it. Okay. All right, bye. Boom. So that's how we do it. We try to lock up deals and they get funny. They don't want to make no money. What's up, TJ? What's up, Maxine? What's up, Rhonda? What's up, everybody? So, yep, Virtual J and Sam Butter. Good to see you. Where's Paul at? Where's Paul at? What up? Diamonds and Pearls. Good girl. Mike buys houses full price. Casual Kia. Kaya. What up? What up? What up? I see y'all. So yeah, that's um one of them deals where they flaked out. They were like, yeah, we'll do everything. And I kind of told, well, that was one of my coaching students there. I told her that, you know, before we called him, that that wife can throw a monkey wrench in his whole plan. And that's exactly what she did. Whenever you got multiple decision makers, you must close all parties, close all decision makers. One little wrong thing. And she said, we ain't doing no terms, baby. We doing it all cash. Now, if she didn't have cash offers on the deal on the table already. It might have been open to that. It could have switched off just because they have offers already, and they decided, well, somebody gonna pay one fifty five cash, and they owe one forty eight. They happy, but I don't know. They could be coming across some wholesaler that just told them, yeah, we'll pay one fifty five, and that'll cover the closing costs and all of that. And they made it look deal, and they might not be able to sell this deal. We don't know. So, did y'all have any other questions, comments, concerns before I roll up out of here and do some more woke stuff? What's up, Vivid Properties? Vivid. This video is being brought to you by WokeSkipTracing.com. For fast skip tracing as low as 15 cents per match, not per search, per match, WokeSkipTracing.com. No monthly fees, pay as you go, skip trace one, skip trace a million, who cares, WokeSkipTracing.com. Check it out. All right, I'm about to get about here and do some more woke stuff. Don't forget to follow me on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL. That's Snapchat, that's Twitter, that's Instagram, that's Facebook, that's YouTube. Don't forget the YouTube with nearly 200 free real estate training videos to learn everything from the Ruta to the Tuta and about real estate. All right, what's up, t I'm about to roll, bro. I'll see you on the next time. Do what you do. Be who you be. And I'll see you before you see me.